What's going on guys, welcome to the video. So it seems Boris Johnson has sent the extension letter that was demanded in the surrender bill, otherwise known as the Ben Act. Now, he didn't just send this letter, he sent it unsigned and followed it up with another letter stating how he did not want an extension and how it would be damaging both to the UK and to the EU. Now obviously many news outlets are talking about this right now but we will take a look at the mails briefly and then we will go over the letter. The article headlines, first letter not signed by Mr Johnson, asked the EU to delay Brexit beyond October the 31st. The second makes clear the first letter is from Parliament, not from the government, but technically that's wrong because that second letter wasn't sent by Boris Johnson, it was sent by Sir Tim Barrow. And the third from the Prime Minister urges Brussels not to grant an extension. The first letter was demanded by the Ben Act, which asked the EU to delay Brexit. Second was covering letter saying the first was from Parliament, not government. Third was from PM disavowing first letter, making clear he does not want delay. In it, the Prime Minister said any further hold up would be deeply corrosive. Oh yeah, it will be deeply corrosive. Late tonight, just before the midnight deadline stipulated by Wrecker MPs, a total of three letters were due to be sent from the government to Donald Tusk, the President of the European Council. Oh, they were sent alright, Ramona's are already off. The first was the letter demanded by the Ben Act, which asked the EU to delay Brexit beyond October the 31st deadline, but not signed by Boris Johnson, using the exact wording specified in the legislation. Not signing it seems to me like he's taking the piss, and well done Boris. Rub it in their face. Technically they signed it for you, but it doesn't have your signature, so they might get shitty about that. The second was a covering letter written by Sir Tim Barrow, the UK's permanent representative in Brussels, which made clear that the first letter was from Parliament, not the government. And the third was a letter from Mr Johnson, which was also sent to the leaders of the other 27 EU nations, well done Boris, in which he disavowed the first letter by making clear that he does not want any delay to Brexit, as do at least some of the EU leaders at the moment. So hopefully they continue down that route and they side with Boris on this. He said UK would continue to ratify the deal and urged Brussels to do the same. I'm not going to read the Withdrawal Act Surrender Bills letter because we've seen that before. I'm sure I've read it out before in a video actually when it happened. But this is the letter that the Prime Minister sent disavowing this first letter that was drafted by Hilary Benn and his Ramona friends. So let's take a look at Boris Johnson's letter. I will read through that for you. Dear Donald, it's good to see you again at the European Council this week where we agreed the historic new deal to permit the orderly withdrawal of the United Kingdom from the European Union on the 31st of October. I am deeply grateful to you, President Juncker, and to all my fellow European leaders for the statesmanship and statecraft which enabled us to achieve this historic milestone. I should also register my appreciation for Michel Barnier and his team for their imagination and diplomacy as we concluded the negotiations. When I spoke in Parliament this morning, I noted the corrosive impact of the long delay in delivering the mandate of the British people from the 2016 referendum. I made clear that while I believe passionately that both the UK and the EU will benefit from our decision to withdraw and develop a new relationship, that relationship will be founded on our deepest respect and affection for our shared culture, civilization, values and interests. We will remain the EU's closest partner and friend. The deal we approved at last week's European Council is a good deal for the whole of the UK and the whole of the EU. Regrettably, Parliament missed the opportunity to inject momentum into the ratification process for the new withdrawal agreement. The UK permanent representative will therefore submit the requested mandated by the EU Withdrawal Act 2019 later today, otherwise known as the Surrender Act. It is, of course, for the European Council to decide when to consider this request and whether to grant it. In view of the unique circumstances, while I regret causing my fellow leaders to devote more of their time and energy to a question I had hoped we had resolved last week, I recognise that you may need to convene a European Council. If it would be helpful to you, I would of course be happy to attend the start of any A50 Council so that I could answer properly any questions on the position of Her Majesty's Government and progress in the ratification process at that time. Meanwhile, although I would have preferred a different result today, the Government will press ahead with ratification and introduce the necessary legislation early next week. I remain confident that we will complete that process 
by the 31st of October. Indeed, many of those who voted against the government today have indicated their support for the New Deal and for ratifying it without delay. I know that I can count on your support and that of our fellow leaders to move the deal forward. And I very much hope, therefore, that on the EU side also, the process can be completed to allow the agreement to enter into force as the European Council's conclusions mandated. While it is open to the European Council to accede to the request mandated by Parliament or to offer an alternative extension period, I have made clear since becoming Prime Minister and made clear to Parliament again today my view and the government's position that a further extension would damage the interests of the UK and our EU partners and the relationship between us. We must bring this process to a conclusion so that we can move to the next phase and build our new relationship on the foundations of our long history as neighbours and friends in this continent our people share. I am passionately committed to that endeavour. I am copying this letter to President Juncker and Cecilio and to members of the European Council. Yours sincerely, Boris Johnson. So that was the letter there. I'm telling you what, the Ramonas are really not going to like it and there's going to be plenty of them moaning already. I've seen a fair few, but this is early days, so I will wait till tomorrow. I'll probably do a follow-up video discussing the Ramona outrage. Now, let's carry on with the article. The historic batch of correspondence which was sent by Sir Tim in both hard copy and electronically represents the Prime Minister's defiant riposte to the Rebel Alliance who scuppered his attempt to finally secure common support for Brexit today. Mr Johnson is also stealing himself for an instant legal challenge from pro-Remain groups to his free-letter ploy on the grounds that he did not sign the Ben Missive. Well, that's possible, and the courts will hear it tomorrow or the day after, likely. However, Number 10 lawyers have pointed out that the Ben Act only orders the PM to send, not sign a letter. Our lawyers have allowed a narrow interpretation of the terms. We are completely entitled to do that, a senior government source said last night. As another big fuck you to the Ramonas in Parliament, like Sir Oliver Letwin, who tabled the motion earlier. The fate of Mr Johnson's deal now lies in the hands of Speaker John Burkuk, who today hinted that he might not allow a meaningful vote on it. The rebel MPs and other EU leaders, especially French President Emmanuel Macron and German Chancellor Angela Merkel. Downing Street is hopeful that other EU leaders will refuse to allow an extension. One source said that they put their chances at about 50%, adding Macron has been particularly tensioned in private about not wanting to extend, and we hope he could take Merkel with him. Last night, the French President's office indeed signalled that they would not back an extension, which officials said was in nobody's interest. So, as I said in the Discord to someone earlier, imagine the humiliation of us being saved by the French. Terrible, but I would take it right now. The Elysee Palace said given that a deal had been negotiated, it's now up to the British Parliament to say if it approves or rejects it. There must be a vote on the fundamentals. And the article continues talking about what happened in Parliament, which we won't go over. The main point is Boris sent a few letters, Ramonas are going mad and it seems like he's saying fuck you to their Ben Bill and to their Ramona amendments that they were trying to place today and succeeded. So guys there it is I just literally wanted to bring you the letter I've ended up talking probably more than I thought I was going to but I'll end the video there anyway. I want to thank the channel's PayPal, Patreon and Subscribestar members for supporting the channel along with everyone who watches my videos. Remember to let me know what you guys think down in the comments section below Leave a like, subscribe with the notification bell and share this video as it helps the channel a lot. And I'll see you all in the next one. This parliament is a dead parliament. It should no longer sit. It has no moral right to sit on these green benches. They don't like the truth. Twice they have been asked to let the electorate decide upon whether they should continue to sit in their seats while they block 17.4 million people's votes. This parliament is a disgrace. But they're too cowardly to give it up. But the time is coming. The time is coming, Mr. Speaker, when even these turkeys won't be able to prevent Christmas. Owners. The peasantry against the feudal barons, colonies, Mr. Verhofstadt, against their empires. And that is why Britain is leaving. And it doesn't matter which language you use, we are going and we are glad to be going.
Where off? <laughs>